we are now finally live. <laughs> Sorry for the hour delay. Things happen. Uh, but everybody's about to start rolling in. N Instagram's gonna be notifying everybody. So let's just wait and see for everybody to come into the room. <laughs> All right, Bowman, let's get you joined. All right, go live with Bowman. All right, guys, just waiting for everybody to start joining into the room. Yo. What's up, man? What's good? <laughs> Nothing much. Just waiting for you. <laughs> Sorry, man. I got uh, held up at work. It's all good. Getting everybody to uh, start joining into the room with us. Uh, if everybody is joining in, please, if you have any questions, get it ready. Hey. <laughs> So people are starting to join. What's up, everybody? I got um the Stormtrooper, the Jedi, Yoda's favorite best friend from Ink Master, Mr. Bowman. Here, I'll, I'll walk you around the shop. You can say hi to some people. Where are you? I saw you got Doom for uh, guests. Look at all those Funkos. Crap. There's Doom. What's uh, up, Doom? Who's that? It's uh, it's Ink Halo? Inkhead Society. Uh, what's up, Inkhead Society? <laughs> what's up, bro? It's Tom Doyle, hard at work. Uh, he's the guy that owns all the Funkos. It's a good collection. It's a massive collection. Uh, it's not that much. He has a stake in the uh, the corporation. He has a, a small percentage. Yeah. Probably a little bit of a stock with them. Yeah. Right. That boy Picasso is probably playing Street Fighter right now. Uh, is he playing Street Fighter? I don't know. Damn, that's a lot of Funko. Oh. <laughs> he said, damn, that's a lot of Funko. What's up, Picasso? There's Picasso right there. Oh, hi. <laughs> Hard at work. <laughs> American Dad in drawing. Yep, exactly. I wonder what he's drawing. I wonder what he's drawing. <laughs> I called it. Uh. <laughs> All right, everybody, sorry. Was everybody joining in? We are getting a quick four of classic trilogy in New York. All this, damn, that's freaking awesome. Yeah, it's not bad. It's pretty sweet, right? And you guys just moved this about like what two weeks ago? Yeah. Lots of moves. All right, everybody, again, who's joining in, please, if you have any questions, ask. We're going gonna, gonna to go through some uh, questions I have, and then I'm going to ask whatever questions pop up on the comment part. Makes it look much cooler than uh, my background. <laughs> yeah, right? So for the people coming in who don't know or do know you, just introduce yourself and, this, and your style. Uh, my name's Tom Bowman, and I'm out of Syracuse, New York, and my style is cartoons and new school. Cartoons and uh, awesome. So, yo, being a big, I mean, everybody sees Star Wars cartoons stuff. I mean, all around the shop, Funkos. Um, how did you establish, like, your own style? Because new school is a, people really think it's like a, like a little niche, but it's very broad because it's on everybody's own creativity to mix with, I guess, the rules and regulations of new school so how did you create your own style of new school um i mean a lot of my style like it's kind of i'm still learning i'm still growing uh and a lot of it was just uh i'm a big uh, so, you know uh fan of disney art so a lot of don bluth and uh tom bank uh bancroft and all these other guys that like basically are disney animators like the last year or so for sure i i, I just look at a lot of disney old disney concept art for movies and things like that and um i really don't i don't even try to like look at a lot of other new school tattoo artists anymore i try to like i really just try to take that out of the equation that way i'm not influenced by anybody else's work but myself but what i'm looking at so on my feed it's a lot of uh disney animation concept art for video games um you know just cool like nerdy stuff basically old 90s cartoons you know darkwing duck and you know, uh, Batman, the animated series, like anything that you grew up watching is 
more of what yeah. I'm influenced by. I like and your I'm twist. Really, I, I'm, what's that? Your Mario and Yoshi, the twist you did with um, what Advent, Adventure Fall? What's the show called Gravity again? Fall. Gravity, Gravity Falls. Gravity Falls. Not a lot of people have seen that cartoon, which is like a very different Disney to come out with like this Illuminati based, like debunking cartoon. And then the style you mix with that was sick. If anybody's uh, seen that, so it's, a, it's a good show that I wouldn't expect to be on Disney. <laughs> oh, it's a great show. It, it has a lot of, if you watch Rick and Morty too, there's a lot of Rick and Morty references um, uh, with Gravity Falls and stuff in that show. So it's pretty cool. Yeah, I'm a, I'm a big fan of Rick and Morty. And I wasn't even at first because I'm like, oh, this show is like hyped up. And then my friend put it on when he came to my house. And I was like, wow, this isn't that a really good, really good show. Because a lot of people were like, yeah. a lot of people were like hyping it up, but the hype was real. <laughs> so for, oh, yeah. for yourself, because I wanted to ask you, which you don't promote anymore. But I saw you said you were a certified like Lucasfilm artist. Like what is that? I know, I know Lucasfilm is, but like, how do you get like certified to be like, like a Lucas Lucasfilm artist. Yeah, I mean that's a pretty cool title. Um, to, so like me and a bunch of other people, other tattoo artists, um, we're involved with the Ink Fusion Empire, and that's um, a guy named Mark Draven, and he basically runs a lot of the comic cons that you go to that you see tattooing at. And uh, every year that they have a Star Wars celebration, usually it's in Florida or uh, it was in Anaheim one year. Um, to do that, you have to go through the licensing department over in San Francisco at Lucas Arts. Um, so like basically got to fill all the paperwork and they have to approve that you're worthy to, you know, represent their art because they, I guess they, they don't want anybody at that convention doing Star Wars tattoos that, you know, probably are scratching on people and things like that. They're, re they're really particular on what, what they allow there. So, so if you're at a, you're at a comic, con, like a comic convention, you're tattooing, you can't tattoo any Star Wars stuff unless you're certified. No, you can, um, but to do, like, so, like, I, I have a Marvel one, and whenever I do a Mar any sponsored Marvel conventions, you have to be licensed by Marvel to work there. So, like, you know, if you do a normal comic book convention uh, and you do, like, a Spider-Man tattoo or a Han Solo tattoo, you're not going to get in trouble. Um, but, like, if you want to do the Marvel convention or the Star Wars Celebration convention, <laughs> You have to legally have that piece of paper to even set, oh, foot, set foot there. Those big you. conventions that are like yeah. classified. Okay. All right. That, for everybody also who's joining in, if you have any questions, please feel free to, to jot them in there. I know everybody's starting to, to come in. Please feel free to ask questions uh, to get lined up. Uh, so oh, for, Mario Mason's on. What's up, Mario? For, all right. So. But we all, everybody will, that you guys don't know, he was on Ink Master Season 8? Uh, nine. 9. So, how was your experience on Ink Master for everybody to know? Truck 71, yeah, I totally plan on coming to Dane's shop. Um, I liked it. I had a lot of fun. Um, you know, it's a reality show, so you got to remember that. Um, the drama is real because they put you in a pressure cooker. So um, a lot of people say, oh, it's scripted or like it's fake, but it really isn't. It's just a lot of stress and a lot of, uh, it's a pressure cooker for sure. But I had a lot of fun. I, I would totally do it again. What? You would do it again? Oh, in RP. I, I, I was talking to Gian uh, about they should do a season. Gian where, Carly! I was talking to him about they should do a season where previous Ink Master contestants can like call out other contestants, like an actual battle, like, if you want to call out somebody from season six, like they have like, like kind of like a feud, feud episodes, like a spinoff, like they did have for how they did for Angel. Oh, I'm, I'm totally into that. Cause uh, me and Derek would totally call it Ulysses and Eva. Cause oh. we got sent home. We got sent home and I, I have a feeling our tattoo was just a little bit better than theirs. I love those guys to death, but I definitely think ours weren't the worst that day. So we were unjustly sent home. So I, I got a score to settle with them. <laughs> Even like with this season, a lot of good artists, like, that's what we think, I, my thing with Ink Master. And I understand they do look at the challenge of that day, but sometimes you got to look at the report card. Like, it's not, it's not the finals, but, like, uh, we talked about when Matt got sent home. Like, that was a big hit. And for him to get sent home before, like, the other people in the bottom three, it was really a bad, I mean, it was great for the other teams, but it just made the show look bad because it got a lot of backlash, like, damn. He's a really good artist. He had a bad tattoo, but there's people who are there who are not going to do any better than him. 
So yeah, I don't think I don't think his was I don't think his was the worst tattoo too. You know, it wasn't. It definitely wasn't the worst tattoo of that of that time. That's that's the hard part is is you know when you watch this you know uh, you know what you you know it's all it's perspective you know what I mean and and it's someone's opinion so like they see Chris and Dave and uh, Ollie like judge <laughs> something it's like what you might consider bad someone might go it's not that bad this this other one's bad so it it's hard it's hard putting your you know your fates in the hands of three people that could completely have different um, opinions. You know, What's that? Opinion. Like a like. Yeah. Yeah, like the three. I mean, <laughs> like a lot. I mean, even some of the people that won the show or got into the finals or got farther than other people. It's that's the thing a lot of people don't realize. Like it's, it is reality television, and I mean, I think some of the times I don't know. I don't agree with what they do. I don't know if it's to spark up more like views, but uh, yeah, like when you guys got sent home, it was one of those times where I was like, you guys didn't deserve to get sent on that episode. Well, I mean, thanks for saying that. You know, I, I definitely thought our portraits looked like actual people and it looked remotely, like, you know, closer to what uh, the, the subject matter was, you know. Um, but Dane and April's and Euless and Eva's look more like space kitty cats and aliens. <laughs> so what are you going to do? <laughs> did you practice any, like, did you practice any particular styles before coming onto the show where you were just like, yo, I'm going to wing it? I mean, I, I've done it all, you know what I mean? I used to do black and gray portraits, um, and then I've, I've done biomechanical. I've, I mean, I've been tattooing 11 years, so I've pretty much done everything under the sun. Um, so I wasn't really too worried. I think that the biggest curveball was, like, the whole um, doing a team thing and having to switch off every hour. Because a lot of people don't realize, like, when you had to switch off every single hour, that was hard as hell. Because you get, you get in the groove, and then all of a sudden they go, switch, and then you got to switch. And that was hard as hell. Do you think that was like the, I mean, challenge wise or just, do you think that was like the hardest part about being on the show was doing the switch or do you think there was an actual challenge that was like, when you guys got it, you were like, what the fuck? <laughs> um, I think the switching was really hard. And then um, after the second episode, we quickly learned, or maybe in the first one, we learned that um, they don't want a tattoo that looks like two different people. They want a consistent, well, it looks like one person did it. And Derek tattoos a lot differently than I, and I tattoo a lot differently than Derek. So we quickly had to learn, okay, we got to somehow mesh our stuff together to look like one person did it. And I think, I think we achieved that. You know, when you watch, you see the first one, and it's like the rose and the eagle. Um, you can tell it's two different artists. But after that point, they all look like one person did the tattoo. So, so yeah, it's, it's hard to put, to put two styles together into one and, and to mimic, I mean, it's, I mean, you tattooing, it's, it's, I mean, I not even during the house, but just your transitions of what you guys actually put from ink to skin. People have different techniques that are going to show up differently in other. You might saturate better than he does. You might put in black. I mean, so, I mean, it, I would think that'd be a hard switch up too. From yeah, what they it, was, it was a lot harder. We quickly kind of, we realized the game plan and the game plan really was, I would go in and put my, my lines really fast because I could, I could kind of do those. Um, and then he would kind of come in and kind of like sculpt the lines or, you know, work on some of the black shading. And then I would come in and I'd kind of clean up, clean up crew and kind of clean up any little spots that needed it and start and start with the mid tones and kind of put that in there. And then he would kind of do his thing. And then at the end, I was always the last person because I was what we call the cleanup crew. So I would come in and just clean it up and tighten up things. So we kind of had a good formula. The cleanup. <laughs> so then. What was your favorite tattoo that you did throughout the season? If you can, if you have one, or I mean, I, I really, as much as the canvas was a pain in the ass, I liked the, the unicorn one. I did like a lot. Um, it when would have said... been the unicorn one from the New School Challenge. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I would have. It would have been. I had an original. I had a, a different drawing than the one she picked, and it was like a unicorn driving a taxi cab. It was very dynamic and really cool. She didn't want that, so. But I, I still am really happy with the way it looks. I really like the head of the unicorn a lot. I thought that was really cool and still kind of fit in my style. Um, the other one that I was just really impressed with, that, like I was really happy that we did it, was that the, uh, what was it, the the creation, the the the, the painting one where the two fingers are touching. Like I was, <laughs> yeah. I was, I was really happy with that. Creation that was... of Adam. Thank you, Tom. <laughs> 
I was gonna, I was gonna ask you because I have a bunch of questions here that I was writing down. So, I can, so classic trilogy, it's your shop, correct? Yeah. Well, so like right now, like we we had to move our shop and we're basically in a co-op with my good friends and his name is Tom Doyle. So there's two Toms that own two shops, but uh, his is Serenity Tattoo and Classic Trilogy. We're all under one roof. It's like a, almost like a, think of it like a flea market or co-op. Like we're two shops operating out of one place. That's, Art, I just, wow. That's pretty cool though. Yeah. <laughs> Does it get hard? I mean, well, you guys must, I mean, you to do a co-op, you have to be really like good with each other. It's like when someone walks in, it's like, oh, you're gonna go to Classic Trilogy, you're gonna go to the other shop. Um, no, it's not really like that. It's you know, uh, Tom is like me; he's all booked up. Like he does amazing, amazing black and gray. So like he's got his own clientele. I have my own clientele, so we never take walk-ins. And then um, Picasso and Evan work here with me, and they're here every day. And then Tom has two other artists, but they're only here on select days. So, um, you know, if, if Evan and Picasso are here, they kind of get the walk-ins. And, the, and then if the other two guys are here, it's like a rotating schedule. And the, you kind of just figure out, who, okay, you got the last one, I get this one, and that guy gets that one. And that's like round robin. Yeah, exactly. So, classic trilogy, I got my own interpretation on, like, why the name is. But I'm just curious, what made you pick classic trilogy for, like, the name of the shop? Yeah. Hi, Ink Demon Art. What's up, buddy? Um, classic trilogy. I mean, when you hear that, what do you think? What do you think? Classic trilogy. See, like, it kind of was to me simple because a cl literally a classic trilogy, like, technically, it before Star Wars started doing all their other extra stuff, they they had a classic trilogy or any trilogy movie from start to end. If it's a good trilogy, it becomes a classic. So that's how I thought of it. Just something that like all around is a good work of art. Uh, but I mean, yeah. I thought that was the same interpretation of what your classic trilogy was. Yeah, I mean, I'm a huge Star Wars nerd, so um, obviously my first go-to was classic trilogy is, is the, the original trilogy, episodes four, five, and six. Um, but that also does that mean you have The Matrix, that's a great trilogy, the Back to the Future trilogy, um, Jaws trilogy, we're not going to count some of those other Jaws, but the Jaws trilogy, I mean, there's a lot of... Jaws really had a good... trilogy? I didn't even know that. Yeah. Oh, no, they actually, I think they have five movies, four or five, but we, won't, we're, we don't count the later ones. Um, but yeah, I mean, like, all those movies are super fun. I mean, Lord of the Rings, like, that's a great trilogy. The Hobbit is a great trilogy. Uh, all those things, like, they just, good things come in threes, you know what I mean? <laughs> really? <laughs> I mean, and there's three artists for you. I mean, so your shop just says you, Picasso, and then the... Uh... The other, I mean, yeah, we well, we have like the, the main the main featured ones are Picasso, uh, me, and then Tom Doyle, and then we have our other guys that are killing it too. That's that's freaking awesome. So, before I get into more questions, hi Heller. For the of course, big Heller's thing, here. Tom Bowman is a beautiful man. <laughs> also, everybody who is, you can also ask that's questions. My, I know people yeah, are coming yeah. in now. Um, so, yo, how has the show changed your life in particular? <laughs> I'm sorry, what was the question? <laughs> how has the show changed your life in particular? Uh, it really hasn't changed. I mean, I know, uh, I've watched all your other interviews, and they pretty much all say the same thing. It really doesn't do anything. Like, it's just really kinda cool. To, it's cool to say it's on your resume that, like, I was on this TV show, but, like, honestly, like, it does it doesn't change anything like i didn't i didn't like we got we get a few people every once in a while that come in but it's usually like the people that come in and then they they go oh wait i you were on that show and then they kind of recognize you but like you rarely ever getting some people coming in just because you were on ink master let's see oh from a question from scott uh k tattoos favorite style of tattoo that's not new school um, I used to really, really love, like, neo-traditional, um, but I haven't done that in a while. Um, every once in a while, I'll bust out a black and gray portrait. You know, usually it's of some pop culture icon, and that's kind of fun. But I, I really just try to stick to just new school, just, like, classic Disney, classic cartoons. I can kind um, of see neo-traditional in your style, because neo-traditional is, like, very bold line work um, with the transition, and, like, your style is, like, very clean bold nice transition line work so i can kind of see where like if you do new because new traditional i mean i don't want to say it's so far i mean it is off but 
but the t I, I mean, from being outside looking in, I think some of the techniques, at least looking at it, look like you can integrate it like a new school slash like neo traditional piece. Because that's yeah. what neo traditional is. It's like a new school form of yeah. Yeah, I mean, it was kind of funny because when I started, I started doing traditional, and then I got hooked up with Dave Cruzman, who who goes by Cruzman, who won a few seasons back, and he taught me a lot. And then as my ability and my confidence was getting better, I started doing neo-traditional. And then I started really getting into just cartoony and nerdy stuff. And I guess I, I hit the, I hit, you know, I hit while the iron's hot because, um, you know, a lot of people weren't doing the nerdy stuff at that point, and I started doing it uh, with a bunch of other people at the same time. And we, we all just kind of hit while the iron was hot and we hit it at the right time. And, and now it seems like it's really cool to be nerdy. <laughs> I mean, funny thing you said that, because it really transits into my next question. I mean, now it really is, like, because all these Marvel and DC movies got so big, like, this universe that was big to people who were into it is now big to everybody. Like, people don't, like, with Black Panther, people don't know that two white men created Black Panther. So, oh yeah, Jack Kirby and Stan Lee, um, you know, innovated user platform to push something of equality at such a great time in the 1960s. And I love how they recreated it, um, how like the director, oh, director, the director and the cast did an amazing job and really brought the comic to life and really brought it to a good impact because we need it right now in this world. So I wanted to ask you besides, if you've seen Black Panthers, what would be your favorite? Um, uh -huh. What would be your favorite? Uh, Attached. What would be your favorite hero movie that you want to see this year, like if you're anticipated for it? I haven't seen Black Panther yet, but I hear it's amazing. Like, I it hear is. it's really, really good. Um, I, yeah, I just hear it's a really good standalone movie, too. Uh, I'm really excited for the, uh, what, Infinity War, Avengers, the new Avengers. Like, that looks really good. I'm just, uh, I'm, it's, it's about time we see Thanos and we see what, what, what he, he can actually do. You know what I mean? They mentioned like, Black Panther, too. Like, after like end credits. Oh, that's cool. They're like Black Panther will be back for <laughs> Infinity War. Really? Yeah. That's cool. That's cool. I I dig that. But yeah, I mean, um, I mean, so far my favorite Marvel one is um, I really like Ant Man a lot. I thought that was, I thought that was really good with Paul Rudd. Um, yeah. I love Paul. I, it's really cool that they made him Ant Man just because of his. He can play very serious roles, but he's very comedic too. So I yeah. like. To brought like a light heart like a lighter hearted version of uh the character to like the universe it needs it needs a little bit more of it's so dark they need some like comedic humor but still yeah. bring a serious tone my, my boy pond's calling you out you did a spoiler alert you didn't give us a spoiler alert for your little for what you said did they say <laughs> damn <laughs> you're, you're, gonna, you're gonna piss all the nerds off man spoiler alert my bad i i would assume <laughs> If you're gonna see Infinity War, like how are you gonna? I mean, even if I didn't see the movie, like it's a, like how can you not have him in? And uh, he was, I mean, he was in Civil War, right? Yeah, you know, Civil War. So he, why would he not be in Infinity War? I but, mean, in, in fairness, he's in the trailer, so he he said get this man a shield. So I'm guessing he's in Infinity War. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Santa Christ said, "Who is the most useless person in Star Wars?" Jar Jar. Why does sure. everybody hate Jar Jar? Jar Jar is the worst. Jar Why? Jar, Jar Jar is... You have to think that people going to hate me? You think of people going to die? <laughs> it's fucking garbage. <laughs> Yo, like I was like, I was watching, uh, like, I, I, I think I was telling you, I was watching uh, the toys that made us, like the Netflix thing. And, yeah, like, that, sh that just... show is badass. <laughs> it's phenomenal, but people just hate, like Jar Jar. I mean, damn. It's oh, yeah, just... that one guy, the guy's like, I created every Jar Jar toy that's ever been made. And he's like, and I, and people hate me. <laughs> and, and people, Pawn said Jar Jar is my spirit animal. <laughs> oh, you, got, you probably got Jar Jar all over your face, too, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> my, what I like, what I'm actually surprised you didn't, I mean, technically you did say, but I'm, I'm surprised you didn't say Pixar. Like was another? Do you do you like find inspiration oh, uh, in Pixar? Yeah, I love Pixar too. I, I really like Toy Story. Um, the Incredibles the two, like The Incredibles I, two. It's finally be, it's finally I coming out. So, yeah, it's gonna be it's gonna be sick. I I love Pixar. I love um all that stuff too. All right. Oh, 
So for any tattoo artists that are on here, I, I, this is a question that I'm gonna start asking artists. What, what advice would you give to either new artists in the industry or even artists in the industry right now? Because you have 11 years under your belt. So any advice for any tattoo artists who are in this, you can give them. Um, I mean, I, the advice I get is just work your ass off. Like, you know, I mean, I, when I first started, I was working two full-time jobs. Um, and, and, tattooing? And, and, and tattooing. So I literally was, you know, I, I work, I'd work at Dunkin' Donuts in the morning from like four in the morning till nine, ten ish. Then I'd go into the shop, I'd mop, I'd clean and tattoo all the way up until about six o'clock. And then I would leave there and I would work from about six to uh, 10 or 11 at, at McDonald's. And then I'd go home and sleep and then repeat. So you know, work your ass off. So wait, when did you, when did you, if you're like in the morning at Dunkin' and at night at McDonald's, when did you like tattoo? Or like when did you start to tattoo? I would, tat I would tattoo at like around 11 o'clock in the afternoon till, till about like five, six o'clock. So I would, I, so in, in back then it was all just small walk-in. So I was probably doing tattoos around like two or three o'clock in the afternoon. And then the second I was done, I would go over to McDonald's and work there. This man, <laughs> Pawn said, my other advice is to start a GoFundMe for <laughs> Yeah, I'm broke, people, motherfucker. The sad part is people do that. People make GoFundMe for no reason. I don't, I don't get it, man. I guess I have too much integrity for that shit. Like, no, um, no, no. no I, I mean, GoFundMe are to me are actual like. Uh, unfortunately, I live in Coral Springs, which is uh, the city next to Parkland. So unfortunately, that I live in Coral Springs, where Newfound Glory is from. Yeah. Wait. That's, yes. I think. Yeah, he, they're from they're from Coral Springs. That's awesome. So, I mean, unfortunately, I mean, if you heard the incident that happened in Parkland um, with the mass shooting, yeah. which it really, it really hit home because my wife graduated from that high school. Um, I mean, I was always over there. It's fucked up. Uh, so, like, that's what, to me, go fund me for it. The people that, you know, yeah. really, like, families that need it. Um, and then other big projects. But, uh, so, I mean, do not do a GoFundMe for no reason. Just look yeah, like I, I just can't stand it. Like, those are totally justified, but I can't stand it when people are like, Hey, I haven't worked all month. Can you give me some money? You know what I mean? Like, I literally, I had a girl the other day, like, that started this group, this group chat with, on Facebook, and I, I don't know how I got into it, but, like, she's, like, talking, and the next thing I know, I got a, in, in a Facebook, like, uh, send me money. It was for $500, and I'm like, why are you sending me? She's like, well, I just, I need some money, so I figured you'd give it to me. And I go, no, I don't even know you. Why are you asking for money? <laughs> I was figuring you... It would be nice. I need it. Oh, ink, ink power, real quick. Um, I did have a podcast. I actually stopped doing the podcast only because this, the Instagram Live and the YouTube was more dominant. Um, but this will be up on YouTube later, and I'm gonna share this to the story. So if you're gonna, if you get out of this, don't worry. It's gonna be uh, on the Instagram as well afterwards. Yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm definitely doing this podcast because my boy Pon is. I'm still waiting to get on his podcast, so I figured I'd hook you, hook, hook up with you because it happens faster. <laughs> Pon. So, yo, what do you think of this? What do you think of this new season of Ink Master? I like it, man. My old, my old boss is uh, the reigning asshole, so uh, he's doing good. He was your Josh was your boss. Yeah, he was my old boss, and then I, 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 uh, I quit. I told him to go fuck off. And then, now we're best friends. <laughs> he has... I think it's, he has, like, on, on the show, he has a... I mean, I, his art, I mean, his speaker itself, he's having that attitude where he's getting, like, targeted a lot. But I think on the show is not the smartest thing to do. Yeah, he, uh, he's he got a strong personality. You know what I mean? That's kind of... When we work together, we butt head, heads a lot because, you know, I'm stubborn and, he, and he's stubborn. But I, I like tonight's episode looks really good. Have you watched the teaser for tonight's episode? I saw I saw a little bit how uh, like him and DJ were bumping heads and shit. Yeah, I think you're gonna see a lot more of that this season too. Like um, they're very much alpha dogs, and um, Josh likes to do his thing, and DJ clearly likes to do his thing. Yeah. So that that to me is really fun to watch. I like watching that. <laughs> you know, it's funny because starting like we were talking about, people were all like, "Oh, team DJ." It's gonna, it's gonna kill it, but Tom has a real big. <laughs> God damn it, dude! <laughs> What'd you say? What'd you say? You have a giant face. 
it's the biggest face. He's right. <laughs> For a flash chomp, they got to abort babies. I really hope that's that's not ever a flash <laughs> challenge. Yeah, right. <laughs> so it's funny how like the team, like the beginning, it was like, oh, Team DJ. And now it's like Team DJ, because every episode is like, like Deanna has been slacking like every time other artists are like pulling stuff out of their bag um, that are like people are like getting surprised about. I mean, from Steve and Anthony's team, I mean, I don't, I don't think now DJ's team. In the beginning, we thought they were gonna win because who they had. Yeah. I don't think that's gonna happen anymore. I see like I honestly see Anthony's team going pretty like towards that direction. Yeah, that, I mean, uh, what's that one guy that? Um had to pick the skull for the the three guys um um was it Jason what yeah. what is it yeah Jason, like he, uh, yeah his team his team seems like they're they're kind of coming up the ranks and they're kind of giving them a run for their money yeah yeah it's team anthony the last episode yeah. with the with the with the like here to throw Bro. like i don't know if you looked at the pictures steve's a great artist but if you look at it the school's head elongated it's bad it's so uh, bad it's so and, and like they didn't get on him for that. Like it literally like here's the and then the skull head is just and then the roses. It didn't make sense at all. Anthony's thing yeah. was super dope. They're like, oh, he didn't really do it. I mean, he was smart because he used the negative space yeah. up here, um, because he he said he never done a throw or anything before. And then DJ's DJ's was cool, but he went very simple with it. Like I don't know. Yeah, if I, was, I was actually um. I was really I, – I liked uh, Anthony's a lot. I thought it was really cool, and I liked it, how he utilized the spot because he was smart. You know what I mean? He, he did it the smart way. Um, I was actually let down with DJs a lot. Like, I you know, I worked with him. I, you know, was on a show with him. Like, I've been following for years, and, like, that tattoo was kind of a letdown. I thought I thought he was going to do something crazy because he usually brings it, you know? And I think, I think that – I think you can tell that that – like, he gets frazzled really easy. And I think you saw him drop his machine. So, like, he was clearly yeah. fra frazzled by that. And I think it was showing. And I think it, it was hurting him a little bit. I'm looking at the people saying, uh, so, so who, F-Ball edit said, who, what team are you rooting for, for out of the three teams? Uh, I mean, I'm still rooting for Team DJ just because I do, I do love DJ. We both come from Rochester. So, like, we have a hometown thing. And then um, Josh... Even though uh, we don't work together anymore, he's still my homeboy, and he's a, he's a beast. He crushes it. So, I think uh, I think him alone is worth voting for. I mean, I'm for a team, Anthony, because the way they're going. I was I couldn't wait for some artists to get off the show. I hated how Katie was such like a DJs for DJ. <laughs> All right, good artists, but Lil D is he just learning? Actually, Lil D's been tattooing for 24 years. I he give was, I give I give Little D a lot of credit because he's I mean, one of the founding people who started. Yeah, he's, a, he's an old horse. He's an old horse, and he's kind of stuck in his ways. But he came on there, and he, he still gave it the old try. Um, so I give him. I mean, that takes balls. You know, anybody that goes on the show, even if you're on the first episode, you, you got my respect because it's hard as fuck. It is, but <laughs> I was pissed that like Matt Buck got over it like every tattoo Lil D did as nice as awesome as he is I'm like come the fuck on now like I was just like some stuff we can't just take that he is a vet in the industry and that you know I just I didn't agree with that like on there uh, no, I know I, I think they, they really set him on the last one because they were literally like listen you guys you keep coming down here like out, out of respect for you we got to send you pack and just because if you keep coming down here episode after episode after episode it's going to be just embarrassing for you so like we're trying to make it make a clean cut right now but you call him an old horse they basically like shot the horse dead so it wouldn't die on its own yeah right in the way you did the way you said it <laughs> so any for yourself any conventions or any um big shows or just any shows in general not like tv shows but you know what i mean like that you're going to be doing this year uh i'm doing I had to, I, I had a whole bunch on the docket, but I have to like kind of pull back on the reins because I, I have uh, two kids, uh, three kids, and two of them are slightly autistic, 
So, like, my wife's basically like, listen, you need to stay home longer and take care of your family because they, they have a hard time when I'm away. Um, they don't really get that daddy's making money and doing things. They just see that daddy's not there. So um, I had to cancel a bunch of um, conventions. But uh, I'm doing – in April, I'm doing a seminar at No Limits um, on Friday the 20th, and then I'll be there on, on the Saturday and the Sunday too. And then I think I'm doing Baltimore – uh, which is in May, um, and then after that, I really don't know. I know at the end of the, end of the year, I'm doing the Evian, the French Alps convention. Oh, that's sick. And then I, I tentatively am doing Australia, too, at the end of the year, too. Dang, Australia, I know that flight is, like, hella long. Like, it's a year to... <laughs> yeah, I've never, I've never done it, but I've heard it's a beast. Damn, Pawn is going in on you. Or oh, that's Pawn, man. That's Pawn. Going in. Yeah, because I think 23 or was saying that you were supposed to be going to Ireland before, or? Yeah, I was supposed to go to I. Uh, hold on a sec. I was supposed to be doing Ireland, but um, that that's kind of one of the things that was interacting with the um, missing out on the kids, so I had to cancel on that, unfortunately. I think Doom, Doom's going to be, I think, in Dublin. I don't know if he's doing that convention, but he's definitely going to be in Dublin. When you do the conventions, do is it like when when you fly out? Is that of your own pocket, or sometimes like your sponsors or like the convention will pay to fly you out? Uh, for that one, uh, that one is just like you get a you get a free booth, like a comp booth, and but you got to pay for everything. You know, uh, pretty much all the conventions. You know that that is a luxury with being on the show is you get you know comp booths, but that's pretty much it. Like. You still got to pay for your hotel. You still got to pay for your, your flight. You got to pay for your travel, your food. So there's still a lot that goes in there. I'm completely, you know, grateful um, that all the all the awesome people that put promoters that put on these shows. They want to bring us out there and me out there, and I'm 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 beyond grateful for that because it's awesome. <laughs> Have you done international yet? What's that? Have you done international yet? No, like, not yet. I'm no, I, I I literally I get hit up from Brazil a lot, and I get hit up from. Uh, um, England and some other places a lot so it's just uh it's one of those things that once the kids are kind of situated and um they're maybe they're a little bit older I can start doing stuff like that but right now it's just not in the cards but I'd love to I'd love to go over there yeah it's great, I was I was wondering like how is Ink like Ink Master like international like I wonder how the love is love you pond baby so I'm like I'm wondering how like the love is of like when Ink Master contestants or artists go abroad Cause it's like it, it seems like Ink Master has become a worldwide thing, which is which is pretty awesome. When you're gonna end up from Brazil, yeah, like, England. A couple of my friends went down to I think it was Colombia or like North America, uh, South America, and they uh, um, they did a whole big thing down. What up? Um, they did a whole they did a whole big thing down there. Oh, right, was it? Was it? You out? Yep. All right, brother. Thanks, man. I appreciate. Go it. get your bows. Sorry. <laughs> you all good. Um, yeah, they uh, they went down to Colombia or someplace in South America, and they did the convention down there. And they said that they were like they had people at the airport. It was almost like you were like uh, the Beatles. It was crazy. They said. <laughs> you <laughs> imagine the artist that comes and you go and you look around and no one's waiting for you. <laughs> yeah, that'd be, that'd be hella embarrassing. But I, 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 from what I hear from everybody that's been to South America, that that they 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 freaking treat you like you're rock stars. Being in America, like American television. Like I've been watching the Olympics, and like, like the fans of Japan, they go in for like figure skating. Like Japan has like the best figure skater, and they treat him like he's like a, uh, like Justin Timberlake or something. It's wild how like yeah. the like international countries treat like other people. I mean, I wish America was like that, but we're so accustomed to like everybody being famous that it's just like, eh. When it comes yeah. down to it. Yeah, the public here is just kind of numb to it. You know what I mean? So, but you know they, they appreciate they, they appreciate you a little bit more down in uh, in other countries because maybe they don't they, they know that they don't get to see you that often. So when they do see you, it's pretty cool. You feel loved. <laughs> yeah. What up, Ant? What's up, Ant? Ant's crushing it. Ant's crushing his tattoos lately. This shit is ridiculous. Yeah, his bio. Bio. Everything. <laughs> If you guys like Biomech, Ant, Orlando, Florida. What did, what did he, he, he called his Biomech something. What was it called? Ant, what did you, Volman, your illustrations are 
are titties. <laughs> Big old fat titties. I forgot what he called his what he called his mix. Oh, any cool new projects you got coming up that you can say? Techno Mac. Um, that was it. That was a cool name. I like that. Uh, I got uh, Halo that you you interviewed. He's doing an, a game, a video game uh, art show. I think it's when, when is it? In March or May? Uh, I think it's in March 9th, but it's at Halo's shop down in the Baltimore area. And me, Picasso, and Te is that May? Okay, Doom says it, Doom says it, Doom says it's in May, but whatever. May seventh. Yeah, yeah, because it's right after it's right after the Baltimore convention. So if you're going to the Baltimore convention, the next day you can go over to Halo shop, and there's going to be a grand opening for the art show, and everybody's dressing up, and we're going to have a lot of fun and and just nerd out over some video game stuff. So that's going to be super fun. I'm doing that art show. I'm doing – there's a big one that's happening here in the upstate New York by um, – curated by uh, Jamie Santos. Um, and that that's going to be, like, actually at a museum here, and it's a big, like, tattoo, like, uh, themed show. I'm, I'm actually designing a whole big bodysuit for that that's going to be on a big, cool piece of wood and stuff. Um, that's yeah. They don't even that, do I'm that much. Get... They don't even do what that much, like – Yeah, I mean – we have Winwood and stuff, but like the only time like, we get like those cool type of art style, like art like shows, is like when, uh, art, when Art Basel was here. But then Art Basel, it's just like it's been getting worse and worse every year. It's becoming really? more like a uh, like one of you go to Art Basel and you're not like and you're not rich because when you go inside, I don't know if you ever been to Art Basel before, but it really is for no. the wealthy, like. They have, like, all these mini, mini studios trying to, of course, sell their paintings. And then, of course, you have a lot of street art and stuff. But I think that's, like, the only time. But, like, I haven't seen down in South Florida any cool, like, tattoo shows, like what you're saying um, that you're doing. Because those sound, like, super interesting. It's not just tattoos. It's, it's more, it's more um, divulging into the art form behind everything, which is awesome. Yeah. Yeah, there was, um, was it 23 Rob Mac? What would you say? Do you feel the judges change the change the rules to fit suit themselves based on the artist in front of them? Uh, yeah, Rob, I totally think the uh, the judges change their rules. They are so wishy washy. They don't know what like they they um they contradict themselves nonstop. They say, oh, we're not going on report cards, and then we are going on report cards. You know what I mean? It's it's pretty funny and, and frustrating. Yeah, it is. Picasso says, yeah, it is frustrating. <laughs> yeah, Picasso. Picasso was somebody, like, before I even knew, like, uh, met Picasso, awesome dude. But when I saw Picasso's art, another phenomenal artist that it was just like, yo, there's real artists that come onto the show who are so sick, and then they get kicked off for, like, the stupidest stuff. Yeah. Yeah, it's ridiculous. Like, they definitely – got to see that Picasso they're definitely, was, they're they're was the best was artist on that season. I'm trying to remember who was on his season, but if he wasn't the best, he was one of the best. Like, he was the Kelly Doty of his season when it came to art. Like, I don't think anybody can match his creativity, which it was just it was oh, yeah. just sad that he didn't – I mean, that the show and the rules and all that, he didn't get farther than what should have been. Yeah, totally. I definitely think he was uh, – okay. he was he was fucked in a lot of ways, and it sucks because he's, he's an amazing artist. Book him at Classic Trilogy. I really need to come to Syracuse. Cause I mean, I plan on going to New Jersey. You're like everywhere. You're like four hours. Like when I, when I go to New Jersey, you're like four hours away. You're like four hours from New York. Yeah, four hours from four hours from Philly. <laughs> Picasso is the Johnny Depp of the town. <laughs> Picasso, did you hear that? Rob Rob Mac says you're the you're the Johnny Depp of the tattoo world. <laughs> <laughs> Like I can see that. <laughs> hey, what's with that weird arm? <laughs> what time is it right now? Really what fun. time is it right now? Uh, I don't. What time is it right now? Uh, oh, this one's conspiracy. Anybody know what time Mike it is? Jackson. Eight forty-two. So we got fifteen minutes before uh, Jimmy, right? Mike yeah. Jackson. <laughs> After the He's quirky after as fuck. Rob yeah, Max I mean, is your quirky as fuck. He loves it. <laughs> <laughs> Rob Max is your quirky as fuck. He loves it. 
Real quick, I want to kill. Can you reshare like stuff in your shop again? Yeah, like, I can go around. So that is when, so when um, super Michael. Sick. Supposedly, the conspiracy is when Michael Jackson got burnt in the Pepsi incident that he was disfigured, and they cloned him. So the Michael Jackson you've been seeing ever since then is a clone. Isn't that fucking nuts? Like, <laughs> right? I don't believe. And that's why like his nose is falling like off. Yo, that's why his nose and shit is falling off because. Clones, they say that Michael Jackson deteriorates. That's like yeah. they replace people with lizard so, people. Yeah. Michael it's Jackson crazy. Right now. <laughs> Damn. Is that a Dave Tevinall yeah. like well, piece up there? Yeah, that's a, that's one he gave me. Dang, there's, this. There's a Picasso original. <laughs> Picasso, Picasso, Picasso. <laughs> I don't like my name. <laughs> That's a lot of Star Wars, which is epic. Oh, funny. Are they? Yeah, are they? Is it, this is your your own personal. Look? Yeah, I mean, most of these are from my personal collection. You guys moved everything pretty quick and. Ooh, the display case. Yeah, when we're, we're motivated, we can get some shit done, for sure. Yeah. You know, game systems. Well, what, oh, yeah. Which ones Which ones you guys have? Uh, we got the X-Men Children of the Atom, and then we got the classic Street Fighter 2. The not-champion edition. The not-champion edition, because I guess we're poor. <laughs> <laughs> Those machines cost like what a grand a piece, even? No, not even. Uh, I got I got the Street Fighter one for three three fifty, and then the other That's the other cheap. one, yeah, and then the other one was like six hundred. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> What's up with your arm? You got, baby, a... you got a little baby arm. Me and my baby arm. <laughs> <laughs> hey, touch Marie's shoulder with your baby arm. <laughs> it reminds me of a, in a scary movie when he's like, T take my strong hand. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, Chris Elliott, right? Yeah. <laughs> how long is Doom going to be in the shop for? How, how long are you here? Uh, I'm here until Friday morning where I'm going to Las Vegas after that and guest spotting at Clean Shop. Oh. So, Golden Skull. Golden Skull. And hanging out at ToyCon um, with all of the original Boba Fett actors. Jeremy Bullock, Daniel Logan, Tamara Morrison. All right, nerd devil. Nope, no big deal. Yeah. Nerd devil. Well, I'm just saying, oh. if you guys want to go to ToyCon and hang out with all the Bobas and the best Boba armor builders, take a look at what Picasso's packing. Damn. All these... Nice. Ladies, ladies. <laughs> <laughs> Why don't you give him a hand? Hey, some people say it's like a baby arm, but I got a grown man's arm. <laughs> There's at least five figures on there. We've okay. just <laughs> passed. It wasn't even trying to have fun. Trying to get. Tom Dawson, trying hi. To hi. What's up? How you doing, man? Damn, that shop is so big. Yeah, it's pretty big. It's pretty big. Um, hey, look, it's me. Look, it's me. Look, it's me with William Shatner. I'm right there. The shot leader. Yeah. We have all, all the Star Wars stuff, and then all of a sudden, we'll William we'll Shatner, Star Trek. <laughs> Was that Terminator? Yeah. The Lantern Corp, which I hope they freaking do good this, this time around. Oh, yeah, totally. This is my wall yeah. of helmets. This is pr pretty cool. Half those are mine. I was going to say that. <laughs> Some of these are Tom Dawes, and some of these are Tom Bowman. I would want, like, that style, but in Power Rangers helmets. Oh, we got one. You want to see one? You have a Power Ranger helmet? Yeah, I'll show you. What we got? We got right up there. Ah, oh, you just got the basic red. Well, I'm sorry. It's not a different color for you. <laughs> Let's get this out. Guys, we 
No, it's fit. It's fit. Oh, because I did. Because he has one of the sickest jobs seen and one of the biggest Funko collections that I've also seen. <laughs> Good gosh. In the shop. So if you guys are in New York, go to Classic Trilogy in Syracuse. You know, Mark Syrac Madness is coming up. Even though Syracuse is like four hours away from Manhattan, take the train. <laughs> yeah, take, okay. you know, you want to take the mega bus. Take the mega bus. Han's going in because you said hella. <laughs> yeah. What's up, Alan? What's up, Artwork by Finch? Doom Kitten, why is Ink Master so lame? I don't know. It's a good I question. Where, I don't know where he is right now, but I'm sure he'd tell you it's lame. <laughs> he asked the question. Oh, he asked the question. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I guess I was right. <laughs> there he is right there. He Yo. asked the question, and then he walks by. Yeah, Eatmaster. Why is it so lame, Tom Bowman? I liked it. That's, Did just, you? that's just me. All right. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it was bullshit. That they, I believe, mean, what, they were the the last original shop, like, yeah, on that, when I was on the show, I, I was, I had an for the final three, right? Doom was the, it was right before the finals. Yeah, Doom and Aaron, Doom and Aaron. Was. But he was, like, right before the finals, too. It was, like, he was, it was, like, the four of them, and, like, they got kicked, and then it was the final three shops. Yep. They yep. Don't realize that the whole place Which was bullshit. Another, another one that should have went to the top three from the, from the get-go. Hey, what I got yeah. Right, you guys are freaking going, having your own little party over there. I'm going to get ready for this next one. I Come to Brazil, yes. Who knows? Who knows? Who knows, Alan? Alan? Any final words you want to leave off on? This is about to be shared on Instagram and YouTube. What do you want the, the world to know? Uh, just uh, come check me out. Bowman underscore tattoos. Check out Classic Trilogy Tattoos. Check out Serenity Tattoos. Check out Picasso Tattoos. Check out Doom Kitten Tattoos. Check out Evan Tattoos. Check out everybody's tattoos. I was abducted by aliens on season seven. What was that? I had an implant put behind my left eye when I was on season seven. <laughs> Are we live? Yes. Uh, what did he say? Uh, he said he was abducted by aliens. Or no, he's, yeah. He's, uh, he said that aliens put a chip behind his ear on left eye on season seven. So that's why he didn't make it. <laughs> so alien conspiracies, Ink Master's lane from films. And, 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 and check out my homie, uh, Pond. He's, he's got an awesome po podcast called Not For Nothing Radio. Check it out. Yeah, I guess. I'm, I'm plugging everything. We're plugging shit. Appreciate this. Uh, if you guys want anybody as well, please follow us on the page. Uh, this is also going to be on YouTube. Um, I didn't improve on the YouTube as much because I've been trying to fix the URL link with my YouTube because I don't know why it's not. It's acting up. But uh, look us up on YouTube, DNK Society. We have a lot of other cool people. We've interviewed Halo, Gian Carle. We've interviewed Christian Buckingham, and we got a lot more people coming up. And Bowman is, is, is going off. So thank you, everybody, for... For, uh, there's, a there's a glitch in the system. It's either, it's either a glitch. But thank you again. We are out of here. Appreciate you, Bowman. Oh, Jimmy, oh! Jimmy, Jimmy. what's up? I'm, 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 Jimmy, I'm about to drive home, and I'm going to watch you while I'm driving home. And hopefully not die. Jimmy <laughs> is right after the new school master. Yeah. All right, you got Bowman, you got Jimmy. Jimmy's right up next. Hella glitch, yes. Amazing tattoos, yes. Please tune into the next. Again, thank you, everybody. We're Hell out. Yeah. Thanks, guys.